said, you know what? I'm not going to wear a hat. And you wore a hat. Do you know why I didn't wear a hat today? Because I was going to wear a hat? Nope, because I didn't want to look like... I wanted... I didn't want to look like Adam Gates walking to a New York Jets press conference looking like he's breathing through his eyeballs. <laughs> if that's not a bigger statement that New York is way different than Miami, I don't know what it is. <laughs> the look on his face. Holy cow. Like, I've seen serial killers look way more composed than that. The best, he looked crazy. The best picture I've seen was Steve Buscemi from Mr. Deed. <laughs> <laughs> he was like... <laughs> I was surprised when he looked like with his hat off. I did too, so I, that's why I had to go with no hat on. I didn't want anybody to think I was going full Adam Gase. I was like, no, Paul has hair. I do have hair. Don't always wear a hat. I often wear a hat, but I don't always have to. He was ahead in the shower, let him flee. <laughs> <laughs>
and it didn't work. You had Vontae yep. Davis and you had Philip Gaines, and none of them worked out. I mean, they were all gone. I mean, some faster than others, but they were all gone, you know, before you were just a little bit past halfway through the season. So I, I think it tells you, you know, the fact that this, they appear. <laughs> I think you were going to say halfway through the game. <laughs> <laughs> I think it tells you, though, that they probably feel stronger about, a, like, snagging uh, a player and developing them instead of grabbing a player who's been in the league for a little bit. Right, because yeah. I look at their track of success, it's been with these young players. So, do I see them investing a lot of money in in the secondary via free agency? I don't. I really don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't think they need that at this point. Rather than a guy coming in that's polished, let's get a guy we can mold. Right. And once they molded a guy, Wallace shot up the the rookie. Uh, what was it yeah, pro, he, yeah, pro football focus. Pro football focus. So yeah. he, I mean, he did, he did very well. He did awesome. You're on the second ring defense. You had a lot of parts around you to help you out. Yeah. Individually, he did well. He played his assignments. He did, he did awesome. And it wasn't like, it, maybe teams thought of it too because it wasn't like they were just solely picking on him. Because mm-hmm. White got thrown at a lot during the second half of the yeah, season. Yeah, sure did. Sure so did. maybe they were like, all right, what? Well, we I mean, can't again, throw any, this wall out. Any season where Jordan Poyer comes up with 100 tackles tells you that the back end wasn't as protected as it had been in, it had been the previous season. I mean, they, no, they no, really, no, that, that tells me that you play a lot of nickel, mm-hmm. and he's coming down in the alley, and you have Hyde over the top. Right. That's well, fine. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying is that Hyde has to make a commitment to one side of the field or the other as the play breaks down. So what I'm saying is that Trey White might have gotten thrown on more because Hyde was shifting to help Wallace or Toronto. Yeah, yeah, that happens. Yeah, that's exactly. Happen. Well, that's what I'm saying. That might be a counter yeah. to why yeah. White got thrown on a little bit more. It wasn't necessarily Trey White. It's the fact that the he Bills, was singled up. Yeah, the Bills. The Bills left him on an island, which is where he should be. Mm-hmm. Like, that's where he should be. Now, imagine if the Bills could get another one of those and put him on an island. Yeah, right. So I don't think they're done. I don't think Levi Wallace is is your guy there necessarily. I think he's a good piece to have. I think he definitely can play the position. It allows Teron Johnson to stay out of the outside. It keeps him in the slot, which I like. Could Levi play the slot? Yeah, I think Levi could play the slot. How many times they had to face a spread and hide it to drop down? You know, that's actually a really good point. So as we as we see the NFL shift these four or five wide sets even more frequently as offensive coaches come in. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have to carry more defensive backs just from just from an attrition standpoint? They had Wallace, Johnson, Pitts, Lewis, mm-hmm. and they had three safeties. Yeah. Um, just well, initial four safeties. I mean, you had um, you had Bush, Hyde, Boyer, and, and who was the other kid? That uh, Dynamo. I can't remember. Yeah, no, you didn't name him. Uh, he came up. Uh, they played, oh, they played two my games. boy, Marlo. Yeah, Marlo, Dean Marlo. My oh boy. My boy. I love how he's my boy, though. I, yeah, yeah, no. I've mentioned him more on episodes than anybody. He's like your he's like your AJ McCarron. You talk about Dean Marlo every time we talk about Stop him. Stop it. Don't even. Stop it's it. It's about a lot. Stop it. It's about no, a lot. Dean Marlo is, is, is a. Uh, not even close to your A.J. McCarron. <laughs> You're hanging on a branch with binoculars on A.J. Perhaps. McCarron. I just kind of walked by Marlo. <laughs> Perhaps. So, I mean, but there, there you have it. I mean, you have a lot of secondary that's been through this team already. And the ones that you named that stuck around are these guys that they were able to get that were undrafted. Now, could that be because they couldn't really spend money? Well, you know what? The Bills did kind of spend money getting Phillip Gaines and Monte Davis. So they did try to invest in that position. It just mm-hmm. didn't work out. So, was that was that the pro personnel department that really screwed the pooch there? You can't tell a guy's gonna quit like that. I mean. I'm, and talking I'm, about, I'm, I'm talking more about Philip Gaines, not about Davis. I think Philip Gaines was a uh, was was a suggestion by by. He, I think he talked to Reed, and Reed that's Reed's fault. Never, not reading that. Andy Reed is an offensive guy, man. Well, he knows how to take advantage of defensive weaknesses. So she, so he said, "Here, why I got one for you." I'm not playing you this year. <laughs> well, if he was playing him this year, no, I, I think he was. I, I think he's like that. Could have been a character signing. Like yeah. Phillips, a great kid. Given uh, the opportunity, he's going to work hard. Yeah. Given the opportunity, he may work out for you. Okay, we'll try it. We need another pot because Gaines and Peters could be <laughs> could be the complete opposite ends of the spectrum as far as yeah, character goes. That's true. So. Maybe that's what happened. I mean, he, he had a great recommendation by Reed. 
he needed a corner. Reed said, he gave him the all go. He said, listen, he's a great kid. He'll work hard for you. And uh, it just didn't work out on the field. So Maybe, maybe we should stop listening to Andy Reed. Why? Well, let's see. He gained a Mahomes and got rid of a Gaines. <laughs> The argument is anybody could win with Andy Reid as your with your Andy Reid as your coach, but Matt Castle was a disaster. But I mean, Castle Castle's like the only one that comes to mind. That was just a straight disaster. What? There's another one. Trent Green. I don't think Trent Green was there with Reid. I like Trent Green. Neat. <laughs> Do I think that the Bills are going to invest more resources in the quarterback department? Absolutely. You know, but I don't expect them to go out and try signing guys again. Try signing number one guy. Yeah. I mean, could they? I mean, you want to really help Tremaine Edmonds and Matt Milano in the middle. You want to really help that pass rush. You go get another guy that you can leave in man on the outside. I don't know if Wallace is that guy, but maybe he is. It puts more of the onus on them. <clears throat> well, I think the trust was there after a while because, again, you saw Poirier down a lot. I don't think they would have done that if they didn't trust him. Mm -hmm. But, again, is that the system and scheme where they say, listen, you're just going to sink or swim. You're just going to you're just gonna have to figure it out. Or is that a well, is we, that a conscious decision to say no? Let's not give him any. Help you notice it happened during the second half of the year, though. I mean, when they were starting to say, "Listen, all right, we're going to start taking a look at, looks at guys, see who plays well, who's who doesn't." Okay, let's put them on an island. You're going to have to do this at some point, kid. Let's see if you can do it now. So that's where I think that came in. I think they they did a lot of things that were outside of the box week eight on because they knew they were gone, they were out of it and they were just evaluating talent at that point. And I, I, like we said, I had no problem with that. I we knew that yeah. that was coming. Yeah, that was. That was uh, you saw new running backs. You saw new receivers. You saw new linemen. You saw everything new. You saw them play uh, sometimes a different style of game to see who can do what. Mm -hmm. And Milano going out told you we need a, we need another linebacker. Right. Okay. Um, Gaines, uh, Gaines, and Davis leaving told you listen. Wallace played pretty well. We'll hang on to him. Mm -hmm. we'll Johnson hang on to Lewis, right? Yeah, Lewis. Johnson played pretty well. Johnson and Lewis covering the slots, I have no problem with. Right. I really don't. Yeah. Um, Edmund started to develop a little bit slower than I wanted him to, but he developed. Like, okay, we didn't whiff on this first round pick. No. Usually first no. round. <clears throat> yeah. So the bar Edmunds, set so Ed, high. Edmonds is not a swing and a miss because even no. if you realize that. You know, the middle is just a little too messy for him. You could still move him anywhere across that linebacking group, mm -hmm. and he'll be effective. Yeah, and that they, they offers your defense versatility. Yeah. Like, okay, they come out, you say, okay, if Edmonds is, is in the middle, and, the, and they start playing the game planning for Edmonds in the middle, and all of a sudden you, you walk on the sideline, he's standing next to Jerry Hughes, and Milano's in the middle. You got to, oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You got Lawson and, and, and Alexander at defensive tackles. <laughs> what are they doing? Mm -hmm. Not stopping the run. Coach. That's for sure. <laughs>